uh, here I'm going to ask you the big question. What do you think is next in marketing? I mean, there's so many things going on in marketing, right? There's, there's so many things going on in marketing, whether it is, you know, the kind of uh, models people are building on, uh, you know, using artificial intelligence, whether it is, you know, people building for the next billion users, whether it is uh, data analysis, uh, there's so many things happening. Uh, maybe what I can do is uh, take some, uh, take a lens, uh, you know, basis, my own experience. And, and currently I am, you know, uh, managing two different businesses. I'm looking at in Movie Pulse, which is, basically a research and consumer insights uh, business unit. And then I'm looking at Glance, which is, uh, well, sort of a content discovery uh, platform on Lockseed, a building for the next billion users as well. Uh, and, you know, maybe I can take things on, on, on that front. Uh, but predominantly looking at marketing, right? Uh, one of the key trends that I noticed in, uh, in marketing at this point of time is, uh, you know, blurring of lines between different departments in marketing. Right. And it sounds very simple, right? It sounds very simple that, you know, different people are not just limited to their own vertical, but are expanding their horizon. Seems natural. Uh, if you were to look at, you know, the way uh, marketing also built traditionally, uh, you would have a media or very specifically looking at media, you would have uh, a research or uh, so, you know, most of the research companies or research agencies would only talk to the research uh, team within organizations. You would have a brand management team, you would have, let us say, a brand activation team, uh, and everybody's working in, in silos. They're mm -hmm. talking to each other, yes, but their work is very, very well defined and then their work is in silos, right? What we are seeing now is, uh, you know, blurring lines between each of these departments. Uh, so uh, I, I'll give you an example. Um, you know, let's, let's look at a CPG company, for example, and, and we work with CPG companies, uh, you know, very heavily. Um, one of the key marketing problems that they are tackling is personalization. Mm -hmm. So how can CPG companies personalize, personalize their messaging, personalize their targeting uh, to consumers? Um, and you would expect that personalization is something which is, you know, media related because we are talking about targeting. We are talking about media messaging, etc. So of course, it's the media team which is handling that, uh, that job, right? But if you think about personalization, the first step to personalization is collecting data. Uh, do you have the right data set about your users? Uh, and data set is in two different ways. One is identity of the user. So do you have the name, phone number, email address, the PII, device mm -hmm. IDs, cookie IDs, et cetera, about that particular user or not? And then do you have different traits uh, uh, about the user as well? Behavioral attributes, uh, psychographic attributes, demographic attributes, uh, um, you know, location attributes, et cetera. So unless you have that data, you cannot personalize, right? So collection of data is very important because if you think about CPG companies, is, yeah, if you go to a retail outlet and buy a Dove shampoo, Unilever does not get to know that uh, Ria is buying a Dove shampoo, right? Mm. Uh, if I go to Flipkart and buy a Dove shampoo, uh, Unilever is not going to know that Abhinav Mohan or device ID 123 or Flipkart member ABC has bought a Dove shampoo. They get aggregated and anonymized level data about purchase, right? So building first party data is, uh, you know, becomes a very important factor. Now, who is the one who is building first party data? Uh, you know, your marketing team is working with uh, agencies like us uh, to, you know, let's say, uh, run surveys and collect first party data. They would also have first party data from their website. So then the technical team comes into play. Uh, they're also working on using data and creating lookalikes. So the data sciences team comes into play uh, mm -hmm. to build sort of an identity of a user you then have to integrate all of that data in a single location, like a, like a DMP, which is a data marketplace, or a CDP, which is central database for, uh, uh, for users. Um, integrate that in a single format to build a 360 degree view of a consumer. So again, your technical team comes into play, uh, a consumer experience team comes into play, and then mm -hmm. you have to activate that data on different forms. So activating that on media in a personalized manner, but personalized messaging needs to come into play. So your creative team needs to come into play as well. Uh, you're working with an agency, so your media team comes, it comes into play. You're using that for, let us say, email activation. You're using that for sending personalized boxes for product tests. You are using that for, uh, you know, uh, more targeted research because you want to mm -hmm. get consumer feedback from different uh, groups of people, right? So the touch points now have expanded massively mm -hmm. and it's no longer good enough for, you know, uh, uh, an agency or a vendor to talk to one team within marketing because, 
um, you know, when I, the personalization problem that I'm talking about, we had to work with the media team of, uh, of the CPG company, the data sciences team, uh, the data uh, products team, the CDP team, and their CDP partners as well uh, to solve that problem, right? Uh, and that's just one trend that we are seeing. Uh, how does that how does that affect things? It affects things because um, your domain knowledge now needs to be so much more than what it was previously. Uh, and B, data becomes a very very important uh, important part of every single thing that you do, mm-hmm. right? It, it sounds it sounds very uh, you know obvious. Ki, yeah, you know these days everybody is talking about data, but you know, I'm talking about CPG company who's using data for personalization and they have difficulty collecting data. You can even imagine what mobile first companies are doing. We have all heard about how TikTok used to, in India used to, but abroad still do, uh, you know, personalize uh, the content feed based on AI algorithms and Netflix does that as well and so on and so forth, right? Um, so, so data becomes very, very handy. And, you know, I see that in research a lot where, uh, no questions research is becoming the next big thing in, in consumer insights and research where people are using data to infer insights about consumers and consumer feedback without actually asking questions. So, yeah, long-winded answer. I'm sorry for that. Uh, but, but I see blurring of lines and then the no questions uh, research and data analysis uh, in my mind are two big new things that happen, which are happening in marketing. <laughs>